Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another Agile Tester Certification Tutorial. We are in Chapter 3 and uh, we just completed 3.1. We are looking in the next topic 3.2, <laughs> which has two subtopics to be discussed assessing quality risk in Agile projects, estimating testing effort based on the content and risk. So in this particular tutorial, we'll be talking about the first one that is how do we assess the quality risk in Agile projects and uh, let's understand the same in more detail. The very first thing is from the foundation level syllabus, you're already aware of what exactly your risk is when you talk about risk. Generally, it is determined as or defined as the uh, negative impact which is probable to happen or it's not possibly that it can always happen but if we just try to determine we try to identify certain risk areas which generally help us to be prepared on time with all the uh, necessary steps and measures to be taken which would help us to overcome the show stoppers and unforeseen situations during the projects and we also learned about the project and product risk and foundation that project risk are something which are related to your process and uh, it generally goes wrong internally and anything which could go wrong with the steps and uh, procedure performed throughout the testing life cycle or maybe more could be also called as project risk but something which happens post release in the market and can impact the end user we call it as the product risk so let's see how do we manage the project and product risk in agile Generally, it happens uh, the quality risk analysis takes place at two places in the Agile methodology. One is at the release planning and the second is iteration planning. You already know about release and iteration planning from the previous tutorial. And here the release planning is about the overall entire thing. When we start with the overall process, overall planning, we try to determine certain risk areas which would help us to understand. And of course, it will be in a con contribution of the whole team where several methods can be used to determine and identify the risk. Whereas iteration planning, of course, the whole team again identifies and assesses the quality risk which will be dealt with in more greater way that what are the product risks which will be uh, required to be assessed as a part of uh, the entire process. So. Uh, in nutshell, the release planning will talk about more on the project risk and the iteration plan Plan will consider the quality risk. What are the examples of quality risk? Here are quick three examples for you to understand that how exactly quality risk can be determined. And uh, incorrect calculation in reports could be one of the way where we talk about the quality risk. Slow response uh, to user inputs that is related to the quality characteristics again that is performance and difficulty in understanding screens and fields that's again from the quality characteristics called as usability and understandability. Further, if you proceed in more detail, you can break it into suitability, learnability and many other things. So we aren't talking about that extent, but yes, we are trying to understand the same in a brief way. One last thing is how do we really uh, you know, conduct the risk analysis process uh, within the Agile methodology. So what exactly is the process or what exactly is the way how you carry out the entire quality risk analysis process in the iteration planning because because that's like a part of the iteration which is a quick sprint then of course we need to be aware of this uh, with these steps to be performed as a part of it so that we can keep our timeline intact. So here are the steps like gather the Agile team members together. It's always a whole team approach. So it's not like a lone one member doing it unlike the traditional approaches. List all the backlog items for the current iteration. What you're looking to do in this particular iteration, just list them down. Identify the quality risk associated with each item, considerably all relevant quality characteristics, what you're concentrating on. Assess each identified risk. Assessment generally deals with determination of the level of impact and the likelihood of that adverse event to happen. So two major parameters which we generally assess for each identified risk is impact and likelihood where impact is the severity and the likelihood is the probability of that event to happen. That depends on the frequency of use of that particular feature of the application. Number five is determination of the extent the testing proportional to the level of risk is applied. So what number of test cases have you written? How much testing are you performing at the same time? So you will uh, you know, address those risk areas depending on the uh, level of risk 
which is determined by impact and likelihood. Then select the appropriate test techniques also to assist your mitigation process based on the risk and of course the level of the risk which will help you to overcome the barriers at a cheap and better way. So that's all from this tutorial team. I hope you got the idea what we are talking about. Further in case you have anything else to be discussed you can let me know by dropping a comment down there. In case you are not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to this channel and uh, you will be having a lot of other tutorials coming up. We are yet to go with some more things in this particular series. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.